and gentlemen. Um, what a pleasure to welcome you all to the Oxford China Forum this year. My name is He Liu and I am the president of OCF 2018. Um, just before we begin, may I just say a massive thank you to you all for joining us today under very extreme weather conditions. I hope the heating system in this century-old building is keeping you all warm and uh, nice. Um, I mean, to those who are watching online, so this is the first time we've done this online, to those who are watching online, might just say a massive thank you to you all for supporting us. We really appreciate your support. They say a good speech should be like a comet, um, dazzling, eye-opening, and over before you know it. So um, I'll just try to keep it short, uh, just in case you guys leave me before I leave you. Um, a lot is happening in China recently. The AI, the sharing economy, constitutional reforms. In fact, it was just yesterday that um, the idea of um, humanity with a shared future, or was hailed on Chinese media as the next foreign policy guidance, coinciding exactly with the topic of our IR panel today. Indeed, as we gather inside the union, the Oxford Union, and discuss China, one can't help but feel a little uneasy, a little overwhelmed, perhaps, by um, the extent and the pace of changes in China. What does the future hold for us? Um, how will the new China look like? What sort of changes and continuities will take place in China in the next few decades? And on the topic of the new China, it is our great honor to have a very distinguished guest, Mr. Xu Xiaoping, uh, to deliver our keynote speech. Now, Mr. Xu is someone who doesn't really need any introduction, but just in case uh, some of you are not familiar, may I just uh, dwell a little more upon his credentials? Um, upon founding the largest private education provider in China, that is the New Oriental, also known as Xin Dongfang, Mr. Xu has become a household name in China. He has dedicated his life to helping young people reach their potentials. After leaving New Oriental, he co-founded the angel investment fund, Zhen Fund, in 2011, and the, the firm instantly distinguished itself by helping startups such as OFO to, to, to uh, rise from laboratory ideas into industry leaders. He is a friend and a mentor to young people in China, and it is our pleasure to welcome, to welcome him to deliver the keynote speech. Thank you all very much, Leo. I'm honored by your kind words and by the hospitality of the Oxford China Forum. I wanted to deliver my, my speech in Chinese. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the language I love most and the best at it. And Leo said that there are many friends in the audience who will study Chinese later on. So better at this moment, I deliver my speech in English. That's what we have, I have here now. As Liu noted, I am known in China as an angel investor. The term derives, of course, from those angels who are said to visit a chosen few, delivering their joyful announcements. I have the far less lofty calling of simply delivering money. No wings to carry me, no trumpet to sound. But I assure, I assure you, I have seen great joy at my arrival. A different kind of errand brings me here today to this thousand-year-old citadel of learning. And what a happy sight, standing at Oxford in the company of so many young men and women from China. The mere fact that you are at this university reveals much about you. Something made you choose Oxford. Something made Oxford choose you. In both cases, there is a short answer. Each one of you has a great talent and a great promise. And I would add a sense of adventure, an openness to the unfamiliar, a desire to be at home, not just in China, but in the world. 
to study abroad can be a more fateful decision than you understand at the times. It removes more than just the geographical limits on our personal journey. No doubt you have started to realize this for yourselves. Even if you came here to master a particular subject, your new options do not end with that subject. I'm sure not the first one to tell you that, having come this far, you have options that most people can only dream of. What can you do next after Oxford? Amazingly enough, you can do almost everything. Good choice have a way of leading to more good choices. You Oxford students are on a winning streak, as we might say in the investment business. And investment decisions of a kind are exactly what you are making. I'm not one to understate the importance of financial investment, but there is another kind of investing that is, a, that is deeper and more important, and that is how and where we invest our lives. So, in a sense, you can look at this conference on China today with an eye of a prospective investor. You have human capital to deploy, as you will, your own ability, energy, and aspiration. And when you think of next steps, no one but you can truly discern the right answer. I was once on that kind of search myself, and it didn't exactly lead me on a straight or simple path. Many of you know I was a music student in Canada a long time ago. After I received my master's degree in 1993, I went back to China to pursue my dreams in a music business. I spent a whole year in Beijing and exhausted every possibility, only to see my hope. My hopes come to nothing. I returned to Canada even poorer than when I, was first, when I first arrived in 1987. It was a miserable time. Why had I failed? The answer is simple. I started a music business. I knew music, but I didn't know business. I failed for lack of the, for lack of the skills to build a business. But so what? Failure is the mother of all successes. That old Chinese adage, served as a prophecy for when I next returned to China. You might also know of Wang Chang, co-founder of Neo Rental Education and a co-founder of Zhenfang. He too had ventured far from his country, finding an excellent position at the Bell Corporation in the United States. In 1996, he left it all behind and returned home with a glorious mission to help people in China to master spoken English. Wang Chang accomplished this and became a legend in China. His story in the forming of Neo Rental, along with Yu Minghong, the founder and CEO, was featured in the 2013 box of his hit movie, Chinese Partners. Many of you may have seen that movie. I confess that I was also portrayed in that movie, but only as a minor character in the shadow of Yu Minghong and Wang Chang. <laughs> a real life success story, definitely. But what you don't know is that Wang Chang, early on, almost abandoned his China journey because of the many frustrations he encountered resettling in his country. It took more than a year to restore his Beijing hukou. And you know how important a hukou is 
to live and work in China. Hugo is an identical card as like a citizenship or, you know, the working permit. It, it took more than one year, okay. Often, he would drink beer with Yu Mihong and me, vowing in anger to go back to America, where, where his wife and son, at that time, they lived in, in the United States. Luckily, these were words only. Wang Chang persevered, and he triumphed. If I may share, but just one more story here. Let me tell you of a bright, pretty young woman by the name of Gu Ji. She graduated from both Cornell and Stanford. Impressive, though, of course, nothing to boast about to the audience of Oxford students. And Gu Ji wanted to pursue a career in China. So one day she asked my opinion about an offer from a startup company in China. I told her this, I don't know which company you should choose. I know only that you should choose China. Gu Ji took that offer and moved back to China, only to find that the position was not right for her. She left the company, and for a brief time, despaired about her future. But soon, she found her passion and cre created a, a training program called Shibai Yan Yuan, meaning literally business school for losers. Only those who have squandered at least half a million dollars are qualified to apply. The program helps people with failing startups to regain their original strength and vision. The school was an immediate hit, and some applicants have tried to bribe me to help them to get into the program. Of course, I don't accept their briberies. Guji and her work are thriving today, and I rejoice in her success because when I encouraged her to come back to China, I all but promised that she would succeed. Why I was so confident? Because deep in my heart I know, China is filled with opportunities, and they cannot be yours unless you are there. For many years, talk of new China brought to mind mainly images of steel and concrete, new highways and bridges, high-speed trains and tall buildings. Today, you will find it means much more than that. There are more powerful and fundamental trends unfolding in China today. In 2017, for the first time in history, the number of Chinese students returning from overseas has exceeded the number of those going abroad. The soaring optimism about China's future has drawn them coming home. And over this, all over this new China, you can feel a dynamic at work, a new spirit in the air. The pure economics cannot measure. I see it all the time in the young men and women who come to Zhenfang, hoping that we will be their angel. It's a self-reliant spirit, creative, independent, market-minded, and impatient in the best way. And at the center of all this, this is a new generation of Chinese, your generation, with possibilities beyond imagining when I was your age. Patience, I will freely admit, will indeed be tested if you choose to build your career in China. We still have some of the limitations and frustrations of a developing country. As in the stories I have shared, 
you can expect false starts or setbacks, as I had mine and Wang Chang had his. And dealing with the less ideal conditions in our country, don't rule out the possibility that you, that your skills and your ideas, that your determination and your resilience might offer the solutions that China is waiting for. For each one of you at this stage of life, it is good that you have ventured far away and learned to be comfortable in the world. That is a strength you have gained and will never lose. That is a strength you can bring home and in China today, it will carry you far. Invest your talent, invest yourselves in China, and great things are possible. The road will not always be easy, but I do promise this, you will travel that path with a joyful knowledge that this is your country, that this is your culture, and this is your time. Thank you very much.